Jalen Hurts and this Philadelphia Eagles offense, man, it is relentless. Let me explain for just a split second what I'm saying here. Because I think this offense is so good, it's normalizing what it's doing out there. It's got folks coming up with these crazy hot takes like we're not that good. Because we're absolutely dominating people in the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. You want to know a secret after studying the film, after studying the advanced analytics on last week's game? For everything that's been said about the Philadelphia Eagles and how you beat this team, right? All that nonsense we've all heard. This whole idea about go to the Washington Commanders game plan and that's how you beat the Eagles. Yeah, that's what we did to the San Francisco 49ers last week. What was done to us in the Washington game is what we just imposed upon the 49ers last week. Let's talk for a few minutes, guys. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. So I want to talk for a second about all the craziness around the Philadelphia Eagles because, yeah, on some hands, there's some impressive, crazy things going on here, right? I mean, if you look at the big play rate, right, what our coaches try to control them, what they try to win, you know, for the running game, which is primarily what we're going to talk about for the majority of today. The running game, it runs over 12 yards, as our coaching staff defines it. In the passing game, it plays above 25 yards. Yeah, the Philadelphia Eagles have elements of that. Like, we definitely can hit you deep on those vertical route concepts. Jalen Hurts throws a pretty deep ball. And we got the offensive line and the skill position, you know, the backs who can make up that skill position to absolutely beat you in the running game. No doubt about it. But the efficiency of our offense is being slept on. We didn't dominate the 49ers in, in terms of, like, just having crazy big plays. It's not really what happened. Of course, we chunked them a few times. With that said... We only averaged like three and a half yards or so. I mean, it wasn't like a really, really impressive rating. As a matter of fact, if you go to the second half of that football game, they actually held us to under three yards per rush. It was like 2.96 yards per rush, right? We going to hear something crazy, though. We were still four of eight on third down and one of one on fourth down. So five out of nine on conversion opportunities in a game where you needed possessions and you couldn't stop us. So we basically drained the clock, limited the amount of possessions you had in a three-score game, and basically sealed your fate. This is what is crazy about the Philadelphia Eagles to me, guys, is that people don't understand. We say these things, and I know everyone knows it. Like, you guys have been around long enough. You've been watching this team long enough to know, hey, man, this is a very, very easy identity to pick up on. They are going to throw the ball early in the games. They are. They're going to throw the ball early in the games, and then if they get a double-digit lead on you, they're going to run the ball on you. We all know that. But has anyone actually went in and looked at the numbers? Has anyone really defined what's happening by the numbers? Because when you define what's happening by the numbers— Oh, man, it is something to behold. Because the one thing I'm going to tell you right from the jump is, is what I noticed without even looking at the numbers last week was, I was like, huh, you know, the Eagles are kind of being a little balanced here with the running game. I'm not going to call this like a 50-50 mix, but they're mixing in the run earlier than I thought they would. It's, this hasn't really been the Eagles' MO all season. They run the ball late, you know, in the second half of games. You know, last week they had six plays, six running plays in the first quarter, guys. There was a total of 18 plays run in the first quarter. Six of them were running plays. 33% of our play selection was on the ground, which is a little bit of an, you know, an oddity for the Eagles, if you will. But going back and revisiting the uh, initial part of this conversation, let's talk about dividing this up into halves and then taking a look at what this offense is and what it has done to people. To begin with, or chapter one, which will be the first half, the first and second quarter. We have run a total of 691 plays on the season, guys. Put another way, in terms of total number, that is the number one. We are the number one team in terms of plays. And I will warn you, not every team has played above 17 games. So in the offseason, you do have to kind of take that total number, divide it by games, and get the total amount of plays per, you get what I'm saying, like per game, to, to get a real feel for where you stand. With that said, 286 out of those 691 you know, one plays have been rushing plays which is number three in the NFL in terms of total numbers of rushes. Once again, the same thing applies, right? you got to divide it by games. Like, we're not in the offseason yet, guys. I'm not doing that until we get to the offseason. The only teams that have run the ball more in the first half than the Philadelphia Eagles are the Dallas Cowboys with their 305 and the Chicago Bears with their 299. Number three is the Philadelphia Eagles with 286 rushing plays, followed up by Baltimore's 282 and then Washington's 279. Like, we run the ball. We run the ball more than I, than I really thought because there have been games where you go back and it's like, man, like Miles Sanders might have touched the ball three or four times in the first half. We've had those frustrations, but I don't know that's necessarily indicative of the entirety of the scale of things, if you will. In terms of passing the ball, we have thrown the ball 405 times on the season in the first half of games, which ranks number four in the NFL. Number one is Cincinnati, 457. Number two is Kansas City with like 400, I want to say like 38, I believe. The Chargers are number three with 414. The Eagles are four with 405. And then Minnesota is 400 is number five in terms of where they finished off here. This is crazy when you look at the numbers here, right? 
we do throw the ball a lot. You know, we're top five in terms of throwing the ball. We throw the ball a lot more in the first half than we run the ball. If you look at it in terms of the uh, the numbers, that, you know, that 405 passes is 58.61% of all of our plays in the first half compared to the 41.38%. So almost, pre- it's pretty close to 60-40 pass to run in the first half of games. You can take a wild guess that that gets almost completely reversed on its head in the second half of games, and you'd be right. But let me read you the numbers. Let me read you the numbers in the second half to, to paint the picture of what's going on here. In the second half of games, we have run 626 plays. Those 626 plays rank ninth overall in the league. To be honest with you, as good as we've been in the second half, I still think there's room for improvement over that 626 plays. That's crazy to say with how good this team is, but I definitely think that's an area where we could get even better next year, to be quite honest. In the second half of football games, what does it look like? 261 passes, which is 29th. I'm going to get to why that's 29th, because I think there's a very, very important point to make here, and it'll it'll dawn on you really quickly once you start hearing how else I break down the games. Compared to 58.30% run, so basically 40 to 60 in favor of the run in the second half of games. It gets flipped on its head. It's interesting to see these numbers spelled out for you, right? It's interesting to see that like we're very balanced in the first half of games. Like We rank top five in both runs and pass in terms of total plays. Second half, it's not so balanced, right? We're Basically, when you look at runs, we're the number one rushing team in the second half of football games, which includes the third quarter, the fourth quarter, and overtime. Our 365 rushes on the season is number one, by a large margin, by the way. And then we're 29th in passing, with 261 passes in the second half. I want to get into, like, why that is. And I think in order to to get accustomed to, to looking at that and trying to figure out, like, why all this is happening, you got to get down to the points margin and how we are manipulating teams with point margins. Because... Quite frankly, if you look at when we're up 10 points and when we're down 10 points and how often we are up and down in games, you start to see why these percentages and ratios work the way, you know, work themselves out the way they do. So let's start off when we're up by 10 plus points. Guys, it's 13 games of the season. Number one, no one has been up in games the way we have. San Francisco has been really close, but the Eagles were number one in that statistical category. We've run 289 plays leading by more than 10 points. That's a lot of plays, ladies and gents. 171 of those 289 plays have been runs. 118 of those 289 plays has been passes. When you work that ratio out, it moves a little bit closer to the to the fully 60-40. So it works its way out to 59.17% run to 40.83% pass. So truly, really, really close to that 60-40 margin. Now, as we take a look at when we're actually trailing by 10 points, which has not been very often for the Eagles. We have only trailed by 10 points in three games. Uh, from my knowledge, those games were Washington, New Orleans, and Jacksonville. I could be wrong. Triple check me because I, I, I'm doing this off the top of my head. I'm fairly confident those are the three games that we've trailed by 10 points in. In those three games, well, I should I should note, those three games ranks as third. The only teams who have trailed less, have, have had less where they're trailing by double digits, was Buffalo and Baltimore, which were both two games, two games on the season. However, we have run the fewest plays in the entire NFL with a margin we're trying to make up above 10 points. 71 plays. 71 plays. There's only been 71 plays on the season where the Philadelphia Eagles have trailed by 10 points or more. That's a phenomenal stat when you really think about that. And to kind of put that into context of how good this game is going to be on Super Bowl Sunday, the number two team in terms of like total amount of you know plays played on the season to where they've trailed by 10 points or more, that number two offense or number two team is Kansas City which 74 plays. You can see that the cream has definitely rose to the top here. Of those 71 plays, 24 of them were rushes, 47 were passes. When you work the ratio out, it comes out to 66.2% pass to 33.8% run. Simply put, why is this Philadelphia Eagles team dangerous? This Philadelphia Eagles team is dangerous because we barely ever trail in football games. We are constantly putting teams down by 10 points, and boy, oh boy, do we put you in a hole by halftime. You guys ever notice every time I do the pregame shows, I keep trying to tell people this game will be over by halftime? It's because, statistically speaking, by the analytics and by the film, we have been putting teams away by halftime to where it has been unnecessary. We are simply playing the possession game. This is why I hate when people try to make these stupid arguments about where teams, you know, fall in terms of statistical categories for achievements and accomplishments and awards. It's a f- foolish argument to make when you understand the way the game is played. The reason we're not ranking high like Jalen Hurts and some of these guys is because we're sealing the game away. We've already captured the lead and we are absolutely dominating teams and it keeps getting left out of the freaking narrative and it's bullcrap. 
what I noticed was we started running the ball more in the playoffs, even into the first half. And I think that there's something to be said about that because it is a little weird because if you go to the second half of that 49ers game, everybody focuses on the fact that the 49ers couldn't throw the ball. And I think there's merit and reason to why they're saying that because, you know, they were trailing by, by three possessions. Ideally, you'd like to throw your way back into the football game. But make no mistake about it. When you look at how many passes were thrown by the 49ers versus how many passes were thrown by the Eagles, we both threw six passes in the second half of that game. The Eagles still managed to put up 10 points. 49ers didn't manage to put up anything. That's the big difference to me. We only threw the ball six times. 32 plays in the second half of that game. Only six of them were passes. We were two of six for 24 yards. A seven-yard completion to Devontae Smith, followed up by a 17-yard completion to Kenneth Gainwell. That was the only passes in the second half. We still were 4 of 8 on 3rd down, 1 of 1 on 4th down, and we were even held to a 2.96 average because they were stacking the box too because they knew it was coming. But we kept pushing them. And that's what's important to me. When you look at why, what is going on under the surface, why have we maybe reverted to a little bit more of a passive offensive style, but we're still bullying everybody that's been, been put in front of us. Miles Sanders, I don't think, was been completely healthy for this playoff push. I think this two weeks is going to help Miles Sanders tremendously. Jalen Hurts, we know, has not been completely healthy. I could tell you that uh, the back-to-back playoff games, the first time we've seen him play back-to-back games since suffering the SC joint injury, he didn't look right on a few of those, you know, those deep passes. I, I definitely think that this two weeks helps Jalen Hurts. Landon Dickerson has been constantly in and out of the lineup. He's been dealing with something pretty much for like five, six weeks now. He's in and out of the lineup. I mean, Andre Dillard's coming quite a bit to play in the last few weeks. Lane Johnson. Lane Johnson's dealing with something. A.J. Brown's dealing with something. When you look at the totality of what's happened and what this team is accomplishing— Man, I don't know what more people want from this team. I don't know what more what people want from this offense. This is a dangerous offense to where, because our defense and our offense play so well hand-in-hand hand together, we're awarded short fields and we make you pay for it. Okay? We're very efficient. We can move the ball on you. We can play bully ball. We can get into the big play rate stuff. We can hit you on 12-yard runs and 25-yard passes. Whew. I don't know, guys. When I look at the numbers and I broke down the numbers, I walked away going, Holy crap, Shane Steichen, Brian Johnson, you know, Kevin Petullo, uh, my guy, you know, Jeff Stoutlin, all these dudes, man, all these coaches, Nick Sirianni, all these guys deserve a ton of credit. Jalen Hurts, everybody. This has been a tremendous season and a tremendous offense. And we got a heck of a test on Super Bowl Sunday. We do. But I got a ton of confidence in what I'm seeing from this team. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all's time and attention. And uh, before I jump off here, just one more thing I want to tell you guys. Go Birds. <laughs>